What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Video Nasties, back with uh, Retro Horror. Uh, if you guys are watching over on his channel, again, I'm Dan from Reject Films. Uh, I feel like it's been a while since our last one, but uh, today we're doing Island of Death from Nico Mastrakis. Yeah. Or this cover, for, since I have two copies for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I flipped the artwork. So you, got, you got the other uh, artwork there as well. And uh, I will say, too, this thing is packed with features. There's really? a part documentary on the films of Nico Mastrakis and uh, revisiting set locations, all that kind of stuff. So a really great release from Arrow Video. And uh, as usual, I will uh, start out by letting Retro go through the really messed up synopsis of this film. <laughs> Thanks. Island of Death. 1976, I believe, has a great tagline. You know, the tagline is the the lucky ones get their brains blown out. Uh, the censored title, I believe, was A Craving for Lust. Greek director Nico Mastrakis. Um, this is a batshit crazy film about two Brit a British couple that visit a Greek island. I think it's called Mykonos. Mykonos. Um, and they go on a tirade of perversion and murder. Uh, it seems like everyone they come in contact with on the island uh, ends up being, uh, you know, attacked by them in some kind of perverted way, including animals. You know, there's bestiality in this. The film is basically a catalog of calculated outrage uh, against victims deemed sinful by this pair of psychopaths. Um, you've just got a smorgasbord of exploitation scenes uh, that that are kind of pieced together. It's just like a catalog of torture and perversion that's kind of pieced together into a film. You got roof, rooftop crucifixions. Uh, you've got a the attack on a gay couple with a gun and a samurai sword. I mean, you could just you got um, a guy that gets drowned by paint, drinking paint. Uh, you got bulldozer decapitations. You name it, man. You got it in this film. Bestiality. It's uh, uh, golden showers. Don't let me forget about the golden shower. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's it's just unbelievable. It's it's really. This is the kind of film that you're just. <laughs> you're not going to see this in today's culture. I mean, it's just it's just never going to get made. It's uh, it was shot on 16 millimeter, I think for like 30,000 pounds. It was Nico's, maybe his second film, but it's probably, yeah. probably his most infamous film, uh, you know, alongside of the films that he made, like um, more mainstream films like Greek Tycoon, which was a, a kind of a commercial flop, The Wind with Meg Foster, and then The Zero Boys. I mean, people, when you when you mention Nico Mastrakis, you think of Island of Death. You don't think of those other mainstream films. At least I don't when you first when you first mention his name. Great, great it's stuff. It's crazy. Involved with uh, Dark Room and Blind Date and all those movies, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just an interesting film. The backstory to this, which is detailed pretty extensively, I think, on the extra features, uh, is a fascinating account of the making of this thing. I guess Nico, you know, at the time that this came out, uh, obviously Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a huge impact on everyone. And uh, he felt like that he wanted to make his own. He was inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre, apparently, but obviously this has nothing to parallel with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just he, he wanted to create some kind of a shocking horror film uh, that was inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think he succeeded. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, from what I gathered, like you said, he wasn't necessarily inspired to make a movie like it, but his idea was, hey, they made this movie for next to nothing. I can do that too and make a bunch of money, make something as shocking as this. So I think this is definitely more shocking than Texas Chainsaw because as we all know, there isn't really much blood or anything in, in Chainsaw and there is in this. I mean, not overly done, but uh, definitely... A little more brutal than Chainsaw, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely more brutal. It's uh, really nothing is left to the imagination, including the 
that poor goat. I still can't get that out of my mind. <laughs> See, I told you on our last one, I remember something about a goat. It had been years since I'd seen it. So I was like, I know there's something to do with that. But uh, I was thinking it was more towards the end when they seek that refuge towards the end. But it wasn't. It was more in the middle of the movie. But um, yeah, like you said, I mean, they go and pretty much think they're um, doing the right thing. I guess supposedly that he was like a really religious person, even though you couldn't tell. So he sees, you know, a gay couple. Well, that's, that's bad. That's not any good. You see a lesbian woman who's a drug addict. Well, that's, that's evil too. That's, you know, the guy is with the woman who's obviously not her husband. So that's adultery. You know, we got to do something about that. But then in the end, not to give too many spoilers away, you find out that, uh, their relationship as a couple isn't exactly biblical as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I, I forgot about that little detail there at the very end um, as he's in the pit of lime. <laughs> yeah. The film's kind of told like in flashback, you, you, right out of the get go, you find this character like laying in this uh, bed of rocks and you don't find out until the end, you know, what's what's going on with that but a lot of these scenes and a lot of the story is told in flashback uh, i tell you what the shooting location is fantastic it's a beautiful island i mean if you if you if you wanted a travel monologue of greece the, uh, apparently it's, it's like a really like in real life it's like a notorious island for multiple reasons oh really i didn't know that it's uh, i think there's a he did like a documentary on the island in like 2015 or something. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a different looking location. I mean, you have a lot of tight alleyways and a lot of you know multiple level buildings and things like that. And then you know behind all that is your your more greener pastures and stuff. You know, but um, it's definitely uh different than here in the states for sure i said the actors in this didn't do a whole lot this bob bailing who plays chris in the movie um looks like he stopped acting around 1983 but he was in the enforcer and cujo i don't know if you noticed yeah. that he, i was gonna say the uh older lady in the uh, golden shower scene <laughs> uh <laughs> she was in toxic avenger two and three and a bunch of other stuff she's probably the most um recognizable one of the bunch as far as the amount of films that she's done. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the girl, Jane Lyle, she was only in one other film. The, um, yeah. um, I, I call it the, um, land of the Minotaur. I don't know if you've seen that with Peter. Cushing. It was, nah, I, yeah, I know she was a, a model and they brought her on to do this and they even say, you know, obviously she couldn't act very well. Her line delivery is not great. Um, and then she went pretty much back to modeling afterwards, which she was very attractive. So um, yeah, no, I thought she did, I thought she did fine. Uh, they make a, they make a believable couple, right? And then of course, when you find out the twist, I think, uh, and it's believable to me. They kind of look like you know, from a twist perspective, it looks like it works. It doesn't. Well, don't but, give it away, man. We can't, we can't spoil <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. In, in retrospective, when you find out, you're like, yeah, I could, I could see that. As, you know, she kind of goes along with whatever he wants to do, even if she's not feeling it. You know, and everything just because of the situation that actually is, and it, it's, it kind of throws you off at the beginning too. He calls his mom and says, "Hey, I'm having sex with was it Celia? Right? Is her name? Right?" And you're like, "Well, why would that be such a big deal?" <laughs> but you find out later why. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's pretty much what a photographer. A lot of this movie takes place through the uh, perspective of his camera. I thought that was pretty interesting to shoot this movie that way too. Uh, it does get kind of annoying at times, um, in my opinion, especially like when they first get to the island and he's like taking pictures of flowers for like no reason and just going, yeah. and going and going and going <laughs> like. Well, he obviously got kind of a voyeuristic fetish kind of thing going because he 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 doesn't miss an opportunity to snap any kind of fetish shit going on. I mean, mm -hmm. he eats that crap up. 
Yeah. And, and, the, and they both get off on watching each other do things with other people too, before the murders take place, you know? Right. right. I tell you, the, then you have a cameo from Nico in here as well. Yeah. I don't think he looked, he was not particularly comfortable in front of the camera. I mean, I don't think it, um, I guess there's a reason why he's a director instead of an actor. He, he looked kind of stiff. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can tell his lines are kind of they're like like we do on here, but we're doing YouTube. We kind of talk over each other at times and things. But he was kind of doing that too in his little scene there, in, yeah, where, where they were staying at. So, Apparently, the actor he he had an actor identified for that role, but they didn't. The guy wanted. A little bit more money than he was paying, so he ended up just doing it himself. Apparently, yeah. I mean, the guy wanted eighty bucks. What? I mean, <laughs> has that kind of cash? Right? Come on, <laughs> you're making a movie for thirty grand. You ain't got yeah. eighty bucks. Yeah, eighty bucks yeah. is too much. Did you know this? This whole film has its own website. Really? I didn't even, even notice. Uh, Islandofdeath.com is like a whole website dedicated to this movie. It's crazy. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, judging by the, the features and everything, uh, Nico himself isn't even a fan of this movie, and he doesn't understand why people, you know, like us, enjoy this shit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a great film. Uh, again, it's it's more just a series of, I, I care, a catalog of isolated scenes of torture, perversion, and murder. It's just, it doesn't seem to have any real flow um but it's it's a this is a bizarre film it's it's just one of the most bizarre films in the exploitation genre that i've ever seen I, I think it's one of those that um you know it sets out to shock you in multiple different ways and it and it achieves the goal i mean it's a i, I i'm kind of kind of in the six out of ten category with it i think yeah. it, uh, i don't yeah, think I I might be a little higher than you. I might go like six and a half. I, I, I really like this movie. I don't know why. And a couple of the scenes actually, I mean, like I've mentioned before, there's not too much in movies that shock me or like get to me or make me feel uncomfortable. But there's a couple scenes in here that made me feel a little uncomfortable. Um, yeah. The um, Well, there's just a bunch. I mean, it's just a... It's just a, a running list of torture type stuff, and uh, I'd say the bulldozer decapitations. What got, I thought that was well done, well done. Yeah, and really I like good. how he talks about it being convenient to help her help him uh, move her body to the ocean too <laughs> afterwards. <Yeah. laughs> what do you think of the ending of this one? The ending's just crazy, man. Like, I mean, again, without giving too much away, in case anyone's not seen this movie for whatever reason, um, and are watching and don't mind spoilers, but, uh, it's just like, what, what did, what happened to Celia at the end? Like what, what happened to her state of mind with this, with this, uh, sheep herder, you know, like, and I know early on she sees him in a dream and, you know, she says, that's the guy from my dream and all that. And, but something really flipped in her, and I, I think she was kind of tired of being told what to do by, I already forgot his name, by the, by her um, husband. You Chris, know. Um, yeah. yeah, by Chris, Chris, by Christopher. Yeah. And uh, um, it's like she felt like she was free now, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, the sheep herder man must have took some Viagra because he, he, <laughs> he was the energizer bunny, man. Yeah, and, and you know damn well before they got there, he was getting it with the sheep. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, because not only does he get it with her, he gets it with them too. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's a it's a crazy crazy ending. I mean, we can sit here and tell you guys what happens, and if you haven't seen it, you still don't even understand by us describing it how how kind of messed up it is. <laughs> And I think uh, I think this is another one similar to, I would say, analogous to Lost House on the Left as far as the music. You know, you've got these kind of these soft, this musical score and song. It's like it's it, it goes really well with a travelogue look of Greece. You know, I think what's the song called Mother or mm -hmm. but it's a very soft song. Um, 
kind of a catchy tune and then in the midst of all that you've got all this horrific shit going on it's it's the contrast i think that makes it unsettling yeah very much and like the last house on the left type stuff when they're running away and everything and trying to seek refuge you have that song playing something about jesus take my hand or something yeah i guess <laughs> Nico wrote the lyrics for a lot of these songs too i guess there there's just kind of a macabre element of this movie almost like a black comedy too i mean if you you know i think people that are going to see this uh in today's society probably you know with the golden shower or the bestiality are going to have a hard time seeing the comedic elements of this but i, I kind of consider this more of a black comedy it's just so off the wall so over the top it's like each scene is trying to top the, the previous scene you know what can we do to top the next one? I mean, it's 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 just it just it just um, it, it just goes after your senses with full force. You know, and, and I love the look on on Christopher's face during the golden shower scene when she starts to actually like. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, hold on, this isn't <laughs> you freaky. <laughs> yeah, um, my one question though is. How are they able to drive those nails into that ground so easily in that crucifixion scene? I don't know. Maybe maybe they, okay. maybe they did some prep work first with the drill. I mean, it's uh, it, it wasn't hard. It didn't look. I yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I mean, no. you put yourself in that guy's place, man. That had to be pretty damn miserable. Um, way to go. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say I've seen another movie like this with so many different shocking death scenes and them just believing what they're doing is right the whole time. And I think that's where some of the music goes into play, too, is um, you're kind of getting it from their point of view, uh, where they're doing God's work in their eyes and uh, everything. So to them, this isn't anything bad that they're doing. No, well, and it's always, I mean, not just like in the Catholic church. I mean, do as I say, not as I do, you know, you got priests molesting kids, but they're, I mean, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. I mean, these, this couple doesn't see their actions as being perverted or, or against, against the Bible. And yet they, they're judging other people. Yeah. And one, one other character in here, but we didn't mention, they do have a like detective or cop or something from, the, the where they're from like after them as well and he's not in it a whole lot they take care of business with him pretty quickly but uh you do have that little side story i guess going on as well and uh he didn't do anything else either that's pretty much the only thing he did as well yeah, yeah the, foster character <clears throat> right the, the, all the acting in this with the exception maybe of nico himself was very good but Really, these guys didn't have much other than Chris. I think Bob Bailing was the only one that really went on to do anything. Yeah, and uh, you you think this would have played out like it did had he had not kept that damn diary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, right off the bat, you're told that's what got him in trouble and got him where it was where he was. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think I think if you got the mindset of a psychopath, which just both this couple had. Uh, diary or no diary, I think you're just going to indulge in all kinds of perverted shit. I mean, uh, I, I even even those even the girl. I mean, she got off on you know sticking the, the gun in the guy's mouth and you know, torturing the gay. There's a scene where a gay couple gets tortured by mm -hmm. a gun and a samurai sword. It's just uh, obviously that wouldn't fly today. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you'd, you'd have people crawling up. Some of these films are just amazing. I mean, I think if when you look at the video nasty list, this is one that I, I you know, I'm not into censoring of any kind, first of all, but this is one that can yeah. certainly, it, you can, you can argue and justify it being on the list just because of the subject matter and, and those mm -hmm. scenes themselves. I was going to say from what I was reading, they, they say like originally like 13 minutes were cut out then it was re um submitted and then like another four minutes was cut out i didn't see what the original 13 minutes were cut for but i did see it was uh censored for the main rape scene um with Celia and the two guys uh yeah. and then which the two guys i guess were actually just tourists that were there in greece and nico hired him for that scene 
which is right. interesting. But, yeah. Uh, between that scene and the aerosol burn with the lesbian heroin addict, um, those were like the two main scenes. And then you had the one with the sickle uh, going through the door where he accidentally, <laughs> you know, uh, takes her out. Those were like the three main um, parts of it that were really cut in the in the final cut of it. Yeah. So the goat scene made it, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know they didn't even say anything about the goat scene on there. I, don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess this is normal. <laughs> no, yeah. no, go no goats were harmed in the making of this film. By the way, they well, sedated the goat. He did say they sedated the goat to do what they needed to do, and uh, he's not sure if the goat is still alive twenty years later. So, in some states, <laughs> it's illegal. You know, in some states, it's what legal. Well, it's illegal in some states. I thought it was illegal everywhere. <laughs> I think well, I think in Louisiana it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know how you know that. Okay, um, <laughs> so this movie had a lot of different titles, by the way, and trying to get it through the uh, boards to get approved. You know, you had like Isle of Perversion. You had uh, Killing Daylight was one of the more uh, ladder titles for it. Psychic Killer 2, which made no sense whatsoever. So the Isle of Perversion again. Uh, right. well, craving, Destination. <clears throat> craving for Lust, right? Is the, is yeah, the, Craving for Lust. Is the edited. Um, they tried to market it so many different ways to get uh, approval from you know, the MPAA and all that kind of shit. The, whatever it is over there um, in the UK. Shame they didn't do a sequel. I talked about doing a sequel to this. It's a shame they didn't do it. Right. I've like seen that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's got like four or five things in uh, production right now. I mean, he's still working today. I mean, very uh, proficient career for sure. Yeah, he makes some really good movies. Uh, I like I like The Wind with Meg Foster. I don't know if you've seen that. And that's uh, I'm trying to remember if I watched the wind or not. That's an arrow release as well. And then Zero Boys is batshit crazy. That's a fun movie. Yeah, Zero Boys is is uh really out there. <laughs> yeah. But uh that's about to say he did it trying to make a a shocking movie. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, he, I, he, he just he did was, it for money, but whatever. Yeah, uh, I think that about covers this one. Again, we try to keep these pretty short. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else on this one. It's it's just one you have to see for yourself. It's just right. for us to dive us to dive in and diagnose it and dissect it. It wouldn't do do it justice. You just need to see it. Go out and see yeah. it. I, actually, it's on Prime. If you don't want to pay to get the Blu-ray, just go uh, watch it. Go watch it on Prime. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you said, we could sit here and read the whole script to you guys, and uh, you still want to quite, you know, get the feel of this movie. You just have to experience it for yourself. Um, so yeah, what do we got? Uh, what do we got yeah. on tap next week? I, I'm, I'm gonna let you pick this one, man. I've been picking them. What? I've been picking these things, man. I, I don't know. What was this for? Um, was this section one or two? I think this was section one. Uh, yeah, it was. Yep. This was section one. So we got section two. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's see. Well, we can do something everybody knows. Um, I mean, we got the Evil Dead and Fun House and. Uh, you know, Funhouse would be good. I, I haven't seen Funhouse in a while. I actually, I actually saw Funhouse in the theaters when it first came out. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. That, that works for me. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, right. I haven't watched it since the old DVDs, so I can watch the Blu-ray now and re-experience. <clears throat> yeah, the Scream Factory Blu-ray. You got that mm -hmm. one, bro. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do we'll do the Funhouse next. How about that? Cool. Yeah, we'll do something a little more uh, well-known and, uh, get that out there so hope you guys enjoyed this review um again we enjoy doing these look forward to hearing your guys's comments if you guys have seen this movie definitely let us know what you think of it 
and uh, watch Fun House for the next episode if you guys want to do that beforehand. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Yep. Later, guys.